She said 4XL and you know the first time I heard it I said come again? <laughs> For what? 4XL! Hi guys! I am in some instances, in some instances I am regrettably, very regrettably I am a double XL. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up, I'm Zanti Maestros. I'm back with another video. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. To the sensitive haters in my comments, please. Oh, and kiss my ass. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are a new subscriber, you are welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back home. And if you're a passerby, I hope you like what you see. Enough for you to stick around. Um, I'd like to firstly thank all of the new subscribers that I have. So many of you guys, I say this every second video that, that I make because so many of you guys are subscribing and I appreciate it, you know? And now that you guys are here, watch my ads. Watch my ads, guys. Like, I want to buy a camera and I need you guys to watch my ads so I can at least make 3000 and get to and then, get camera. So, show me support. Stand by me. Stand by me. Watch my ads, okay? Anyways, I'm back and today I'm going to do a review of a television show. Uh, for people who don't know or for people who are new, this is Everything I'm Zanzi. It is the most exciting YouTube channel on the internet that gives you an entertaining look into all things South Africa and um, what I do here primarily is do reviews of television shows and the purpose behind that is for us to hold uh, these production companies accountable on the kind of content that they are showing us you know uh, so that we can um, make sure that the content that we are consuming is content that edifies and builds us as a black community um, I'm going to be doing a review of Ostofusa today. I did the past two videos that I did were political videos. And yo, Alison Shapika Kwefi Jalo, guys. Jolang Kwefa. Yo, you guys quiffed me so hard. Ling ling what a blue tick. Cause a lot of you guys, like I didn't get as many views on the past two videos that I did. So that just tells me that maybe you guys don't like it when I'm getting all political and stuff. So I don't know, you know, I'm just going to give you what I can give you. I Even though I enjoy the political talks, maybe you guys just don't want that kind of stuff. But today I'm back with a review of Ostofuza. And before I talk about it, I want to plug um, Delicious Teas. Go and um, follow Delicious Teas on Instagram, guys. Here goes the shirt that I got from Delicious Teas. It's called, um, well, the tagline on here is smooches, like you can see. And you know that smooches is my tagline, smooches. <laughs> so, like, how appropriate, how apropos, like, how appropriate with the red lips, you know? Okay, anyways, I'm going to be doing a review of Ostofusa. And let's talk about it, guys, because, yo, it's sitting on my heart. Idutimo. Let's talk. As Kulume. Okay, so for people who don't know, Ostofuza is a new reality show on Mojalav. It is Mojalav, I think it is Mojalav. Uh, and Ostofuza is a show that follows uh, five plus size ladies around, uh, five South African plus size ladies around. Uh, but the the staring, the staring or the main character is Neo Nelima Buza. It's four plus size ladies, my bad. Four plus size ladies, and the the staring of the show is Neo Nelima Buza who is Mabuya, my bad, Neo Neli Mabuya, who is the founder of uh, Plus Size Black Diamonds, which is a plus size organization in South Africa. The purpose behind uh, all of these plus size organizations, and especially uh, the one that Neo started, is to um, take away the shame uh, from being plus size or being fat, you know, uh, take away the shame from being a fat black woman, uh, normalize being fat and black, you know, and uh, because we all know, especially if you live in the black community, be you fat, skinny, you know that a lot of the time as black people, you know, we, we do make fun of the fat guys. We, we make fun of the fat people. And as a fat person myself, I know a lot of the time when I haven't seen people in a long time, they look at me and they're like, yo, you're bigger now. Have you tried such and such a diet, you know? Or someone will say, yo, life must be going very well because 
you know stuff like that you know so what they're trying to do is 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 uh, take away the judgment and the stigma behind it so that everybody can be accepted for the way that they are um i get the premise behind it i i absolutely get the thought and the idea behind um you know, starting these groups, uh, which is basically the the whole idea behind the the body positivity movement. So, um, the purpose of um, Ostofusa, the reality show, is to follow these women around and um, watch them as they uh, show us, as the South African public, how uh, they navigate the world as 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 plus size or, or, or you know, fat black people. Uh, I'm going to use the word fat a lot. And you know I'll use it interchangeably with plus size, uh, but the word fat is not used uh, as a derogatory term because even me myself I'm very overweight, so uh, far be it from me <laughs> to make fun of someone else who's overweight, you know. But I think also because I'm overweight, I think I do get a pass to make fun of overweight people because your sister's got a foot bath. Shem, you I shem kimoti, like you know it. I am I'm, I'm a chunky girl, you know. My ass is big. If it takes a corner, so my bum is still coming behind me. It's like three steps behind me, you know. So I'm a chunky sister. I'm not even gonna lie. So uh, if I do make a joke, if I do, you know, sound a little tongue in cheek, I get a pass, guys. I get a pass. So in episode one, we are introduced to the four ladies. The first one is Kony Mufukeng. And she is a plus size model and, you know, a, a body positivity advocate. And then the next one is Neo Nelima Buya, who, like I said, is the founder of Plus Size Black Diamond. And something that she said in the show that stood out to me, she said that we're all created in God's image. And yeah, now Mudimwa Haya Ostoda, like her God is fat. Her God is chunky, so she's made in the image of her God, who is a plus size man, you know, or a plus size person. And you know, we are all made in God's image and God does represent all of us, but I will get into, a little later in my reviews, I'll get into what it means to be made in God's image and the fact that sometimes how we look is a, I won't say a bastardization of what God looks like. But sometimes how we look and how we act is a bit deviant from how God is. Because obviously we're human beings, you know? Uh, there are a lot of sins and a lot of vices that we have. And one of the sins, you know, or one of the vices that we have as human beings is gluttony. And gluttony is something that leads us to be overweight. And I say this as someone who's overweight myself. I know I eat a lot. I know. I know. So if someone said I was gluttonous, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be offended because yes. I do indulge, especially in pastries and carbohydrates. So yeah, you know, you are made in God's image and maybe, you know, for you to feel great about yourself, your God was daughter value, okay. But if we're gonna tell the truth a little later on, sometimes we look the way that we look because oh, now we can't uh, say no uh, to overeating you know uh, because well, now we find comfort in food you know or or, or because uh, we don't have a healthy relationship with food um okay the the third lady is and then the fourth lady is manewo mkholeng so these are all the four ladies who are part of this whole uh, uh television show uh, who are gonna teach us and show us you know how it is or what it's like to navigate the world as a plus size woman Firstly, I want to talk about them in terms of their, uh, their, their body structure, you know, uh, and their body shapes. Because uh, a lot of the time in the plus size community, there is a bit of a bias uh, towards people or the community leaning more towards the pear-shaped body in terms of representing plus size bodies, you know. Um, so a lot of the time you'll see the pear shaped body and you won't see the apple shaped body You won't see that straight body because you know the pear shaped body does look more appealing, you know But at the very same time uh, The pear shaped body itself has its own problems because if you're pear shaped and you're carrying your weight at the bottom You do have run a risk of, 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 of gaining or, or getting diseases uh, such as lipedema, you know uh, so 
let's let's talk let's tell the truth being plus size is not easy being overweight is not easy you literally physically feel the weight depend it doesn't matter where you carry your weight at so in terms of or, or as far as the body shapes there's three women who are pear shaped uh Kony, Katseho, and uh, Maneo are all pear shaped, meaning they all carry their weight at the bottom. And then uh, Neo Mabuya is the one who is, is the only plus size lady here, or the main character here, who is apple shaped, meaning she carries her body in her boobs and in her, in her stomach. But I'll tell you one thing, Neo is very confident and very comfortable in the body shape that she has because uh, they, at some point they were planning a pool party, they went to go fit um, swimsuits for the pool party and when they got there, uh, or, or before they got to the to, to the fittings, Neo told us that Yena, she wants to be the representative or the representation of an apple shaped or a plus size body or or a daughter says Nanglis Shwa, you know, and she wants to wear a G string, net for right thing. She knows that Nanglis Shwa, but net for right for right thing, net for right thing. What looking at G string? And I was like, okay. I said, all right, babes, okay. I said, okay, girl, because as far as self-esteem is concerned, 10 out of 10, you are doing the damn thing, you know? So after we meet all of the ladies in episode one, um, they each get sort of like, um, you know, separate uh, times on the screen where they tell us about themselves and how they grew up and what uh, is what is a recurring theme in each of the world. In, 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 yeah, what? What is a recurring theme? What is a recurring theme, or something that is a recurring theme in each and every one of the ladies' um, cameo or one-on-one or, 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 um, -on -one with with the camera? Is that each and every one of the ladies says that they had a difficult time growing up because they would be made fun of because they were overweight, you know? Um, and there was a time where they felt objectified, number one, and where they felt ridiculed because they were overweight. I completely get it, guys. I, I get it. And it's unfortunate that we live in a world where people are made fun of because they are different from other people. Um, that's why a part of me really does appreciate the body positivity movement because what we're doing now is creating a time in history where everybody is valid and everybody can exist no matter how they look. You don't have to look, you don't have to be skinny, tall, light skinned with blue eyes for you to be someone who, who won't be made fun of or to be the superior race or the superior person you know where we're creating a culture where everybody can exist and i appreciate the body positivity movement because now it means that stuff like uh making fun of people who are disabled because of how they were born you're disabled you were born like that what can you do you know making fun of people with albinism and and putting the lives of people with albinism at risk Stuff like that can end. If you're born with albinism, what are you gonna do? Your your skin loses melanin. What what can you do? You can't. It's 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 what your body's doing. You can't help it. You know. So I I really love the body positivity movement because it means everybody is included. I love it for the inclusion. Everybody's included. But now when it comes to being overweight, it's a bit of a problem for me. It's important that even the overweight people be included and that even us as people who are overweight were valid and were part of the group and were not made fun of. But it, it, can, it, it can become a bit of a runaway train, but I'll get to that at the end. And another thing that stood out for me that the ladies um, kept talking about in terms of their experience as fat uh, people uh, or as fat children, uh, they said that they realized that in their family, the fat gene or being big bonded, you know, runs in the family. A lot of them come from families where people are big, fairly, you know. So for them, it wasn't su a surprise that they would be big themselves. For them, they've got an idea that no. This thing runs in the family, so why would I be skinny? But I know for myself as well, uh, in my family, especially for my dad's side of the family, the people in their family are a little, they are overweight, and they've got a certain body structure that I took as well, you know? But in doing my research, and in, in me trying to lose weight, and for in me trying to look my best, I, I, I learned that some things don't run in the family. 
some things don't run in the family some things happen to you because you allow them to happen because you keep telling yourself that a particular thing runs in the family and uh, my mom's got diabetes my dad no no my mom's got hypertension my dad's got diabetes my my dad's sisters uh, one like I think both of my dad's sisters also had hi uh, diabetes so if I'm gonna sit here and say certain things run in the family or if I say if being fat runs in the family then that means that I'm gonna sit here and fold my hands and say ooh I must just wait for the diabetes train to run through here because it's going to get me at some point, you know? It, it totally takes away my agency and the choice that I have and the decisions that I make that lead me to become a particular way. Um, so that's the introduction of the ladies. That's who the ladies are. They all, uh, you know, significantly overweight. Uh, they all have a history of being bullied. Uh, and they all say that they come from families where they are all overweight, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what the show's gonna is, is gonna give us. Um, and I'll tell you one thing: I was completely amused when the ladies were going to the pool party. Because in episode one, we learned that Newo Newo uh, normally throws or, or hosts a pool party every year or whatever, and um, they were going to go prepare for the pool party that Newo was hosting. I think she was hosting it last year, 2020. Oh, I think it might have been 2019, I can say, I don't know. I'm not sure about the timeline. So when Newa goes to, uh, for fittings, you know, for, for, for the swimsuits, she takes the three ladies, she took Maneo and Connie, and she took another third lady who's also apple-shaped, you know? So uh, as she's making a call to, to, to this lady that sells the swimsuits, she tells the lady that, listen, we're going to be having a pool party. We'd like to come over there for swimsuit fittings. And yeah, um, please have sizes from XL to 4XL available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She said 4XL, and you know, the first time I heard it, I said, come again? <laughs> For what? 4XL! Hi, ah, you guys. I am, in some instances, in some instances, I am regrettably, very regrettably, I am a double XL in some instances. Even when that happens, I do a double take. I'm like, what? Double X what? You know? So this girl sat there and she said, 4XL, I said to myself, no. I said, no, girl. I said, baby, go, no. I said, no, sweetie, because now it's getting out of hand. This particular matter. This particular matter is getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. 4XL, guys, and I'm not making fun of someone who's clearly overweight, who clearly has a problem, but... At some point when you get to 4XL, there, there should be a time where you have a conversation with yourself and you say, babes, after 4XL, what is next? 6XL? You know, once I get to 6XL, what is next? I'm bedridden. And then once I'm bedridden, what is next? People are just wheeling me around in a wheelchair. You understand? Like, for me, it was a little concerning. For me, when she said half sizes XL to 4XL available, I said to myself, this is a cry for help. For me, it sounded like it was a cry for help because I said, no. Now it, 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 it's just, the horse has bolted. The horse is on the other side because what is it for XL, guys? At that point, you can't control your weight anymore, you know? And that's, that's a grievance that I have with the show. And let me give you my final commentary on the show and then on it, on episode one, because this was an introductory episode. So my final commentary on the show as a whole is this. I, 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 like I said at the beginning of this video, I appreciate the body positivity movement. I get what it's trying to do and I can completely appreciate the fact that it, it, it's making a lot of things that were abnormal in the past normal and things that should have been normal from the get go, you know? But my, here's my problem with, 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 with uh, this reality show and what the implications that it might have on, on the psyche and on the understanding of black women. Uh, firstly, we run the risk of normalizing or even glorifying obesity. That's what's happening here. We run the risk of normalizing and glorifying obesity. Uh, we have someone who says, 
get swimsuits that are triple four XL available. And like I said in the previous segment, once you are triple X four XL, X X X L. What is next? Six XL. Is that what's next? Then after six XL, guys, is are you now bedridden? And once you're bedridden, are you now on three hundred pound life? What is next? So my problem here is that we run the risk of making obesity so fashionable that uh, people can't be corrected anymore, and people are sitting so comfortably in their prideful ways that even when your weight is running out of control, the people who care about you can't come to you and say, "Listen, Lucy." Your fupa is by your knees now. We, we can't get your fupa back. Like, you know, we can't help you at some point. What must we do? And for me, food is like alcohol. Uh, food is addictive. Go do your research and check how addictive sugar and carbohydrates are, which are the biggest leading agents that lead to weight gain. Food is addictive, you know? As much as for some of us, uh, some people might be more predispositioned to gaining weight and to being fat and some people might have a tougher time losing weight than others But the truth is that food is addictive And if, if, if we look at food as something that's addictive and we look at it the same as alcohol and we say Okay, you can have a drink or two or three to have a good time But as soon as you have a 12 pack by yourself, then you've got a problem The same must apply to having three slices of pizza and as soon as you have a full pizza by yourself now you're addicted if we can talk to our loved ones and kuza them if they've got a problem with alcohol this body positive body positivity movement is going to a point where we can't kuza our loved ones when they have a food dependency when they are so overweight that they get into a point where they might be bedridden because now it's sexy it's a good look it's nice you know it's nice it's body positivity to be overweight you get a swimsuit you slap on some makeup on your face and everybody congratulates you for being brave when in reality every year every year as a human being you should be able to sit down with yourself look at yourself in the mirror and correct yourself and correcting yourself does include looking at yourself and saying but now Miguel you've gained so much weight you can't fit any of the clothes you used to fit last year what is the problem are you having a good time are you dependent on food are you stressed you know and I'm not saying that everybody should or must look a particular way or have a particular body shape but my issue here is the fact that a reality show like this runs the risk of glorifying obesity everybody living in this sort of prideful uh, mind frame of being plus size and pretty and people not being able to uh, advise people who are overweight and uh, bordering on illness because of being overweight and people are left uh, to their own vices it's going to get difficult for us to correct people or for us to even make suggestions to people that we love that listen you know your your weight your, your weight has sort of taken a toll now you you can't walk down the passage anymore like you know look at look, look at what's happening your skin's changing because weight does have an, an an effect on so much of our body you know so that that's just my only fear with the show that i hope it does not run the risk of um uh, 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 um, normalizing something that um, should should not necessarily be normalized, you know. Uh, um, uh, food addiction is real. Food dependency is something that is real. And um, a lot of the time, people are overweight because they don't know how to eat right. In some instances, but some of the time, it's because people are addicted or dependent on food. You know. Another problem that I have with the show is that it's perpetuating a very old and stale stereotype about black women. I think as a black woman in South Africa, or as people in South Africa as a whole, we know that a lot of the time, the image of womanhood in South Africa was always a big black woman. Be she light-skinned, be she dark-skinned, but all of the time it was always a big black woman. Because I know my grandmothers were both big. My mother's mother was big, tall black woman with big breasts, very light-skinned, very, very light-skinned, almost little colored, you know? I think she was. I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but 
um, uh, on my dad's side, my dad's side, my grandmother was also a very big black woman, uh, big hips, big booty, you know, a very pear shaped black woman, you know. So I had the different variances or, or, or the different images of, of a big black woman in my family, you know. So uh, for a lot of us as black women or, or black people, uh, the, the image of womanhood, of the black womanhood, a lot of the time is a big black woman. And that's a tired, it's a very tired, it's a very stale, it's a very old stereotype that we need to get rid of. It's a very tired and old stereotype that we need to get rid of. Because a lot of those women who were big and black were women who had a lot of um, medical ailments, who had your diabetes, your hypertension. There are so many illnesses that can spring from being fat or from being overweight. And it's not to say that all overweight people are sick, no. It's not all overweight people who have diabetes and hypertension, all of that. It's not all of them because I'm overweight and I don't have any of them. Praise God, you know, but every day of my life, I do think to myself, my God, I need to eat right or I need to do better so that I don't end up with those illnesses because they do genuinely run in my family. So I, I'm just really wary of this show perpetuating a stereotype that we should be getting rid of as black women, you know? Um, as I, I'm sure, though, that if, if you're anyone who is um, not ignorant, you know, you, you will know that there are different kinds of black women. You know, there isn't just one black woman who is the fat black, you know? Uh, there's different ways to be a black woman, but... It, we, we, we are going, this thing might be normalizing a stereotype that we should be getting rid of because as black women, we should be sitting here and trying to be the best versions of ourselves, being the black, best black versions of ourselves. And sometimes that means sitting with yourself and saying, but why am I overeating? Is there a reason for this? Why am I doing this? You know? And sometimes it means sitting with yourself and saying, but I've been a size 42 for such and such a time. Why am I this size at my age? Should I be a size 42 at my age? Like, how is it impacting me to be a size 42 at my age? Because one thing I do know is that being more overweight at a certain age makes you, it ages you, makes you age uh, faster than other people, you know? So I, I just hope that, a lot of us will take the show as something that it's supposed to be, which is just a show that gives us a glimpse into how a particular set of our community lives. But I just hope that a lot of us who are overweight can look at ourselves through this plus size community and see areas where we need to correct ourselves and where we need to improve ourselves, you know? And that starts with um, having honest conversations with yourself about the, the, the food decisions or the food choices you make and uh, your relationship with food, you know? So yeah, anyways, that is my review of episode one of Ostofuza. I think it's going to be a fun show, uh, but already I had a bit of a sneak peek at episode two. And I'll tell you one thing, I got bored because it looked to me like they were manufacturing drama. And here's the problem with me. Sometimes I forget that these reality shows are really just TV productions, you know? So in some instances, they have to manufacture drama, even if it's not there. And that's when I get bored. I get so bored because I can see through manufactured drama. But yeah, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching my video right up to the very end. And I know you watched all of my ads. Thank you. You guys will see me in my next video. Smooches.